Today, I'm gonna to put some science behind testing out Sherwood's 1000 CFM air filter. I've set up my Raspberry Pi in the workshop to take air quality measurements every 10 seconds, and I'm gonna do a few before and after comparisons to see if the air filter actually makes a tangible difference in the workshop. So if you've ever wondered about how much dust you're sucking into your lungs while you're out here, stick around, we'll find out. So while I'm getting this out, hello gang, I'm Mario, the wood father. I bought this air filter a month or two ago, but I didn't install it as I wanted to get my Raspberry Pi air meter set up first. I'm not going to cover the detail of how I did that, but if you are interested in replicating some of the tests that I do, leave a comment here and subscribe to my own channel. If there's enough interest, I'll put a video together on how you can build this setup for yourself. First things first, let's get a baseline of what the air quality is like in my workshop under normal circumstances. There's a lot of different things that you can measure for air quality. My setup is focused on measuring PM 2.5 and PM 10 particles. I'll explain what they are a little bit later on. I haven't done any woodworking today, so looking at the graph, I can see that PM 2.5 levels are generally under 10 and PM 10 are generally under 20. Both of those values are very much in the good range as per Victoria's EPA air quality standards. But what happens once I make some cuts? While I'm making these test cuts, I'll give you a little outline of my workshop. So it's nine by three meters. The ceiling is about 2.6 meters high on one end and it's angled down and comes down to about 2.1 meters at the back end. And that's back where my workbench is. My biggest dust makers are probably the CNC machine, the router, the table saw, and then the belt sander. Although all of them are plugged into dust collection when I use them. The two worst offenders are probably my lathe and the chop saw, which I don't have any collection on at all. As I mentioned, my workbench is down the back of the workshop and although it's covered with some timber for an upcoming project at the moment, this is generally where I spend most of my time here in the workshop. So that's why I've set up the air monitor just above it. This is the air that I breathe for extended periods. So here's what happens. Within a couple of minutes of those cuts being made, the dust has managed to fly up through the air and get picked up by the meter at the back of the workshop. The readings immediately spike up. PM 2.5 goes straight up to 40, whereas PM 10 jumps up to 400. For PM 10 being at 400, that means that it immediately lands in the very poor quality grade. Well, maybe that's not entirely accurate, so let me explain a little bit about uh, PM values and what they are. PM stands for particulate matter, and that is essentially dust. That's the easiest way of thinking about it. PM10 means a particulate matter particle, <laughs> which is 0.01 millimeters in diameter. Essentially, that's the dust that you can see in the air and once you breathe, it goes inside your mouth and inside your lungs. Too much PM10 in your world and your eyes will probably start stinging, you might cough a few times and you might even have a runny nose, something like that. PM2.5 is the same thing, but a lot smaller. So PM2.5 means that it is 0.0025 millimeters in diameter. And that's not just small enough for you to breathe in into your lungs, but apparently it's also small enough to escape into your bloodstream, which is kind of scary to think about. Hmm. However, in the woodworking shop, you don't really have to worry about PM2.5 all that much. Generally, you're gonna find that coming out of smoke. So if you had a fire, um, or exhaust in the city, that kind of thing. In a workshop, you'll get a little bit of it, but you won't really get all that much. The way it's been explained to me is that if you were standing in the middle of the city at a busy intersection, you'd be breathing in more PM 2.5 and PM 10 from the exhaust from all those cars going around than you would in a workshop, even on a bad day. Now this here is how Victoria's EPA describes exposure to these sorts of particles. For the PM quality to be considered extremely poor, it needs to be greater than 300 for an average of one hour. However, to make things easier to understand, I'm going to simply say that any period greater than 300 is extremely poor, 120 to 300 is very poor, and so on. So if I look at the data after I made those test cuts and overlay the gradings, this is what we get. It's not really a pretty picture. It looks like it takes roughly two to three hours for the workshop's air quality to settle back down to where it was before I started doing any work but it's not unusual for me to spend eight hours out here. I might be cutting, then gluing, then cutting, then designing something, then cutting. So in that case, the air quality never really gets the chance to settle down and I'll be breathing it in all day long. I normally only wear a mask when I'm making cuts in MDF or when I'm making a heap of cuts on the chop saw. So seeing this data is kind of making me rethink my poor choices there. 
So this is where I've mounted it. It's just sitting flat on top of the chop saw. I've had to do that because I've literally got nowhere else in the workshop to put it. You can mount it on uh, shelf brackets against the wall, or you can mount it vertically, I guess, against the wall, or you can hang it from the ceiling. Once I've done a bit of a workshop re-renovation or remodel, that's something I've got planned over the next couple of months, then I'll probably have it hanging from the ceiling. For now, it's going to sit here. Perfectly fine, it's just a little bit in my face. But it doesn't really matter how it looks, what I want to do is test it out. So I'm going to go ahead and make those same cuts that I made before, then we'll turn this on and then we'll see what happens. Is it actually worth the money, time and effort? I hope so. So now that the dust has settled, let's have a look at the results. And there's actually a really, really big difference in the numbers here. The spike never climbs up to 400. Instead, once I've got the air filter running, it caps out at about 300. The workshop actually returns to normal levels within about 15 minutes, and that's instead of two hours. You can see that once it gets the air quality back down to fair, it's only a minute or two back before we into good. With no air filter, fair stuck around for about half an hour. It's really obvious in this view, when you look at the whole day overall, you can just see the two separate tests and how quickly the air filter manages to bring the room back to levels that are actually better than it was before. I bought the air filter because I thought it might be good to turn on when I have kids come into the workshop, but after seeing how well it performs, I'll just be using this all the time. I'm quite excited by it, to be honest. I think it's gonna be really nice to not have to blow my nose 20 times at the end of the day in the workshop, uh, just to get all that dust out of my body because the dust won't come into my body in the first place. I'm looking forward to that. So based on the measurements that I've shown you and a couple of other tests that I've done along the way, I am very happy to recommend this air filter. It clearly does improve the air in your workshop and make a real difference. I did mention earlier that I did go out and buy this myself. However, TimberCon have thrown a special offer our way. If you're interested in buying one of these, throw in the code WOODFATHERFILTER10 and you'll manage to get 10% off of this model here. If you're not after this one, you're after something else at TimberCon, then you can use the code WOODFATHER5 and that'll give you a 5% discount across a whole range of different uh, tools and machines and other things like that at TimberCon's site. Essentially, you'll get a discount and I'll get a little something something back in return. So big thanks to TimberCon and you for doing that. So guys, I hope that helps. If you've got any questions, leave them down below. I'll do my very best to answer them. Please remember that I'm not a scientist, so apologies if I got something wrong. If you are interested in finding out more about this, hit me up or hit up TimberCon. Um, if you're interested in finding out more about the Raspberry Pi setup that I've got, I'm actually gonna extend it so that when the air levels sort of degrade in the workshop, I'm gonna have the Raspberry Pi turn the air filter on automatically via an IR blaster. I think that's gonna be a cool project. Let me know if you're interested and then come subscribe to my channel and I'll put a video on it there walking through how to do it. Otherwise gang, have a great day, breathe easy and I'll catch you in the next one.